I know we look at like the current trajectory of media overall and various properties that are now controlled by people that don't seem not only fond of you, but not fond of the properties it is that they now have control of. And, you know, we get caught up in having these discussions and, you know, some people are angry, some people are upset, some people are mad, disappointed, whatever the term is that you want uh, to, to utilize where you're not, you don't like the direction that things are going in. I think it's very important to find things that, of course, you get enjoyment out of. And for me, obviously, it was the reverse that changed everything, not just when the success started, but before when I actually committed to it and I started building my team and all that, you know, it was very, very fulfilling and it was a, a rigorous pro process. It was a lot that had to go into it and it certainly was a lot of work, but I had an absolute blast in creating something that was my own and giving you all something that I figured that you would enjoy. And of course, we've been validated. We're looking here. Uh, ISUM2 is closing in on 1.7, let's say 1.73, actually. By the time maybe you see this video, it will, will have hit that. 15,000 closing in on 15,000 total purchasers. Um, we're over 20, what, like 26,000 books. So we've sold already over a third of the books that we sold in ISUM1. And seeing people that are having their theories and everybody's having the conversation about the story in itself with the big reveal this go around with Isom and why he quit, which is what everybody's going to learn in this upcoming book. And I'm just having a blast and everybody that's a part of this project is having an absolute blast. If you watch my previous streams with the great Chuck Dixon and he's he's been so welcoming of this um, because you guys have been welcoming of him into this Ripperverse fold. And the same thing the Saska sisters say, same thing that Mark from his comic books for kids says, and they give you guys so much credit as, uh, as customers in the community and the fandom because of how enthusiastic that you guys are. So, you know, the kind words that you guys give them and certainly welcoming them into the fold is something that everybody that's a part of the Ripperverse appreciates, not just myself, but the creatives um, that are doing these future projects. But the world building in itself, Chuck spoke about, and I'm having a blast as well doing again because I'm writing Ice Home 3. I'd say in the next couple of weeks, Gabe and Cliff Richards are going to start their work on Ice Home 3. We're going to close out this uh, arc, the ill-advised arc. But we also got, you know, we got Alpha Cord coming up. We have um, uh, Sasuke Sisters Yaira. Um, I, I, Chuck has already finished his other book that he'll be doing that's been unannounced. We have some other stuff that the uh, Saskas want to do as well. It's just, I'm having a blast. Mike Barron said live, which I was not ex anticipating that. He wanted to join the team. So this is what it's about. It's about fun, man. And yeah, we, we don't get paid unless you guys are getting something it is that you want. And that's something that that's the capitalism of it all. And that's the gorgeous part of it all that it's, it's based on merit, not on bankers, not on, on uh, some investment firm, not on, um, you know, somebody that's paying the money for this to happen uh, because they're able to subsidize it with something else. That's not what's happening. All of this is organic. It's grassroots. It's coming straight from the supporters of the Riververse and you buying product. And this is why we appreciate you guys so much, of course, because it allows us to invest in other things. It is that you guys want. Right? So the animation happens because we were able to make three point seven million dollars on that first campaign. Other projects, Saskas can get uh, get brought on. Chuck, all these other artists, they can get brought on because of the success of the uh, uh, general uh, projects, which, you know, that's the incentive that we have to continue to create, which is why we're, we're trying to get our release schedule moved up. Um, uh, having stuff come out more frequently. I think 2024 is going to be a huge year for the, the, for the Ripper versus people get more acclimated to seeing products come out from us often. Let's say that, but I'm having fun, man. And it, it's just, you know, I was up last night and I'm sitting here well, right before we went live on uh Tuesday night's main event, we had a late show and you know, I'm, I'm writing and I'm like, man, I'm, I'm coming up with this, coming up with that. And things that are in universe stores and, and 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 other sorts of buildings and all that, just little stuff like that that I know people are gonna pay attention to. That also has little storylines weaved within it. Man, I am just having fun, dude. I'm having fun, and yeah, the creative stuff. And you've heard me say this before: creative stuff and business stuff are not separate. 
There are idiots who are economically illiterate that like to think of it as a separate thing, but they're not. They're tied in to each other. I think a lot of people think that they're not because there's creative people that really don't have a business bone. Most creative people don't have any business bone in their body. They, that's why they need other people um, to assist them uh, there. And there's nothing wrong with that. that. That's how it should work, right? You have a deficiency, you get someone else that that's their actual expertise, right? Um, but they are tied. They're intertwined. Like definitely with an independent company like ours, like you don't get success unless you are creative success. Right. And people are enjoying what it is that you're you're uh, putting putting out. So, look, guys, I'm having fun. I appreciate every single one of you. They continue to make this a success. Cover D is now out. I love that people are loving it. We have people that are saying it's their favorite cover. The turning in ISOM number two cover D. Oh, man, it came out so good. It's just amazing. Uh, how this bad boy looks, and I'm enjoying uh, that you guys are enjoying this. You guys are going to enjoy the story, of course, um, but we wanted to go with something a little more sleek, a little, uh, you got a little Chadron out there in the background, uh, Texas at the bottom, switching it up just a little bit, but something a little more unique and sleek is what we, the direction that we wanted to go in, and that way when people start to look at, let's say, years to come, five years down the road, you're going to see this image, and you are going to associate that with ISOM number two. Um, it has that look and feel to it. And Tony did an absolute great job. And shout out to Brett, the colorist there. And shout out to everybody, all the Ripperverse customers, man. You guys are incredible. We appreciate the continued uh, support uh, for the, this this company who is still growing. We still haven't hit a year. We're a few days removed from actually hitting our year mark of launch. Um, it's crazy how much time has – or. It's not been that much time that's passed, but so much has happened in, in, within that window. It just goes to show that we're just getting started, baby. We're just getting started. If you like this video and want to get into a new comic book universe, visit Ripperverse.com. Our first campaign for ISOM 1 hit $3.7 million, and the pre-order campaign for ISOM 2 is currently live. So go check it out and watch the official launch trailer, which is the first animation of Ripperverse Studios.